I've been wrong. I've been giving you wrong advice. Or maybe I've been framing the advice wrong. And that's what I want to talk about today is shame no. and how shame, which is other people's expectations and experiences projected on somebody else in a way that impacts them negatively. And in this channel, we talk about friends and connection and work and life and transition and, and in a way to explore how we can make that smoother and how we can enjoy that more. Well, the challenge is we all have very unique backgrounds and the advice that I give, whether it's recommendations about money or friends or social connection, could be so off because you're such a unique individual. So I think I want to try to do a better job of continuing to provide my perspective, but also caveating that perspective that it is mine and by no means should that be impacting you and your experience should not really to a certain extent be influenced by what I think. Um, you should have a good understanding of what works for you, what you want and be comfortable with that and be comfortable with the reality. So let's get into like shame and really unpacking this a little bit. So from a shame perspective, it's essentially when a group or a community or an individual looks negatively upon a person and that negative look can be both direct or it can be indirect and um and for example the shame is when you don't conform to a set of standards for the group and but yes we all want to be part of a group and we want to have friends and community and we want to have all that stuff right certainly something that i'm struggling with since moving to new york um and we all want to have that but at the same time um some of those can be unhealthy projections onto you so i think if we can learn what are the elements of of that drive shame, I think that would be a good step forward for us. So like, for example, the big Eureka moment for me listening to this podcast, which I'll post in the in the bio or whatever, um, is like shame is based on the assumption that the person has a choice. <coughs> and I think like, that's a really hard concept for me because I come from a relatively privileged background. So, and I have maybe pushed through a lot of things. So I assume that other people have a choice as well. And that's not always the case. You could come from a different socioeconomic background. You could have a different career background. You could have a different body, right? Um, or you could have a different mind and a different way of thinking about things, a neurodiversity. So I think for me, I need to do a better job of appreciating the fact of these diversities when I'm providing my thoughts and perspectives and experiences um, and realize that everybody doesn't have the same level of, of choice. Uh, I'll give an example, right? Like somebody who is really good at dancing, for example, they can just get the beat and they can dance and they can groove and it comes very naturally to them. And they listen to a song and they watch somebody and then boom, they do the muscle memory and the output is this like beautiful dance all in like 10 minutes. I went to a dance class, it, I was not in that category. But then shame happens when those people or some people look upon somebody else who's trying to do it, trying to dance and they just cannot, for whatever reason, cannot learn it at the same rate that that individual did. So shame happens when 
And maybe this person, uh, the way their brain's structured, they'll never be able to do it. So for a trainer to continue to be thinking, oh yeah, we totally, we totally can get you to this point where you can always learn at the learn these songs we can get you to that point is unfair to that individual because maybe at some point they're not able to do that and by projecting what somebody can do um and can do it maybe quite fluidly to somebody else um and they end up not being able to do it and they haven't prefaced that in the front saying a lot of people can't do this, so don't feel bad about it. Um, I, I think that's the important aspect when it comes to to shame and unpacking the fact that you have a choice. Food is another example, right? Like, for example, um, diet and, you know, on this channel I say, oh, here's the way to get some nice hips and to do, uh, to maybe like, and by the way, I don't have those, so I'm still working on that. Um, but like diet aspect and losing weight. I do talk about that and I have talked about that on this channel. Like, yes, I provided the tips that worked for me, but in reality, like the odds of somebody being successful at losing weight in the long run is really sl is really small. It's like five, 10%. So for me to project that, oh, you just have to do this formula and then boom, here you go, you have it. And then you're like, okay, well, I just listened to Maddie and or whoever it is, right? I just listened to this individual. They told me how to do this and here I am struggling. Boom, I'm like, I'm like at the same weight. In fact, I did it and I gained weight. Like, and that that is a reality. Uh, and I, or me, as in like me, society, groups, um, say well you should just be able to do it and then you look at yourself and you put yourself in that in that category and, and that causes pain like real pain the shame can cause pain because we want connection right and and when you feel and you experience pain it's a block from that connection so you're not getting that connection um, w w which we crave right and you're not getting that connection and it's it's really hard for us to move to that next point so ultimately what happens is we as as humans try to move on from that from that feeling that uh, uncomfortable feeling of shame so we go into this stage of denial of maybe I can't do it or um, uh, 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 I I'm struggling to find the words for it, but like you lock it down. So that's what I wanted to talk about was shame in a little bit of detail. I gave a few like examples for it. And I think that in an effort to be more balanced and fair to your mental well-being, as well as mine is like, I, I want to make sure that what I say in the future isn't as hard and as fast as I suggest and that what maybe worked for me might not necessarily work for you or your friend or whoever and the extent that I go through my transition or the extent that I make a change or whatever that might be that is related to me and I need to do a better job of doing that. So in conclusion, like, yeah, I was wrong and I needed to adapt my thinking because I was projecting that other people could do what I could do. And and in certain categories, I felt the shame because I wasn't able and I haven't been able to do what other people have done. So. I think it was really good full insight from my perspective and you know I, I think being aware of these topics is helpful um, and then also creating those uh, awareness uh, and you know acknowledging it to people who maybe highlight this it, it, you know for example somebody 
tells you something and you don't have a choice um, or maybe that's not the right word like you maybe there is a choice but maybe the odds of something happening uh, is more likely like nobody holds it against you that you don't win the lottery like that's crazy right like the odds are <laughs> not in your favor so like nobody's holding that against you and saying oh man i can't believe you haven't won the lottery yet like that's just crazy so um yeah so again think of it in terms of odds and i would try to do a better job of that of like prefacing it and speaking more from my experience so hope this was helpful